Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. It's Barnheimer time. Yes, it's a special two-part report from Tiger Mountain. Uh, we're going to be reviewing Barbie and Oppenheimer. Stick around and listen for part one on Barbie. All right, welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about the new film, Barbie. Which is, uh, um, you know, part of the double feature Barbenheimer, which is the big cinematic event of uh, 2023. So, you know, is it is it a film? Is it a film? Is it a light romantic comedy about Klaus Barbie, the famous uh, Nazi French Nazi guy who uh, got up all kinds of mischief during World War II? Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It's not. It's not about Klaus Barbie. No, it isn't. It's about um, Barbie the doll. You know, if you all remember. Uh, Barbie is that kind of famous um, doll that was uh, kind of hoisted onto the world at the end of the 1950s by, uh, I can't remember her name, Barbara, somebody or other, I think her name is, and she was uh, kind of, uh, you know, connected to Mattel and uh, all that kind of stuff. Basically, um, you know, they foisted that onto the world and it became a kind of cultural phenomena. And it did kind of change, they make a joke at the start of the Barbie film that, um, you know, dolls for girls before Barbie were sort of, you know, sort of like babies. And, you know, it was like kind of like they were being brainwashed to be mothers. And then along came Barbie, which was a kind of symbol of kind of female glamour in the late 50s. She was like a Bond girl, basically. Uh, and, um, you know, this became a kind of, you know, icon uh, of, you know, I guess a lot of people's childhoods, particularly women, obviously. But everyone saw their sisters play with Barbie or, or whatever, or you know, friends' sisters or whatever growing up. So it was a familiar figure to all of us. So, um, you know, it had been in the works for a while that they are going to make a film of, of the Barbie phenomenon, so to speak. And, um, you know, uh, Margot Robbie and um, Ryan Gosling were chosen to star as Barbie and Ken. And it was put together by um, uh, Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach, whose most recent film, uh, I actually, I think I reviewed in another uh, report from Tiger Mountain called White Noise. Um, they made that recently, which was actually quite, quite a good film on Netflix. And this is a new film... Um, look, how can I put it politely? Uh, well, I'll just put it non-politely. Basically, the Frankfurt School raped the Barbie legacy. That's the uh, that's the quick summary of what the Barbie film is about. Now, the Frankfurt School is a group of um, Jewish uh, communist intellectuals uh, who originally uh, from Germany, but had to flee because of uh, not, not Klaus Barbie. He, did, he didn't have anything to do with them having to flee. But the Nazis, yes, they did flee the Nazis, and they came here. And, um, you know, basically they wanted to get their, their act on uh, in America. And then they began their communist subversion. Uh, instead of in Germany, they began it here. Or well, not here, I'm in Lusa, But um, in America, they began their communist subversion there. They settled in Southern California and they immediately hated it, even though it was a kind of paradise at the time. And they, they whinged the complaint. And they brought in this whole idea of identity politics and, you know, warring, you know, warring genders, warring sexes warring, um, you know, like, with, you know, racial animosity. That was, you know, and they brought, they thought that through doing this, it would bring about a kind of, you know, communist utopia, which, of course, it hasn't and will, will never do that. But um, so, you know, you can see the influence of the Frankfurt School on this thing. That's probably been put there by Noah Baumbach, who's the um, Jewish kind of um, intellectual, he's a reasonably good New York um, writer and director. He just wrote this film, and Greta Gerwig, he's sort of his ingenue, uh, you know, she is like, um, I guess he's a bit like Woody Allen and um, she's a bit like Mia Farrow or um, Diane Keaton, more like Diane Keaton probably, but she's quite, she's quite a good actress. And she's come in and directed this and it's made it all about the kind of battle of the sexes. Barbie land is a kind of um, utopia where, uh, you know, there are all different kinds of Barbies, including multiracial and, you know, they all hold the powerful jobs and Ken is a kind of, just a kind of male archetype um, who, you know, really is, you know, pretty, just likes to go to the beach and, and not even could swim and stuff, et cetera, et cetera. So there's this kind of um, uh, dichotomy in the film where uh, they go from Barbie land, which is this female rule world, and they come to ours, which is, of course, rule, as it is, as it is, ladies and gentlemen, by the terrible patriarchy. Yes, yes, the terrible patriarchy rules our world. And then, um, you know, so Barbie comes here and finds out to her horror that, you know, our world is ruled by terrible men. And she immediately wants to escape back to uh, her world of, um, you know, uh, Barbie land. And, but Ken, when he's there, Ken picks up a bit of the alt-right. He's been watching the report from Tiger Mountain. He's been watching, you know, all these kind of, you know, 
been watching a bit of Andrew Tate, he's been listening to Jordan Peterson because he takes these kind of you know alt right kind of ideas and, and uh, male um, you know, menosphere ideas back to Barbie land. And he goes back to Barbie land before uh, Barbie gets back and he you know turns everything around. And instead of having a female president, he becomes the dictator and all the women now have to serve the men in Barbie land. So basically it's this big kind of mess. Um, you know, I mean, um, you know, Ben Shapiro famously um, did a kind of 45 minute um, takedown of this film. Um, you know, I mean, I think that the politics of the film is sort of crazy and it is a kind of identity politics, but it's such a, a mishmash and it's such a mess. And it, and some of it is funny, as I said, because some of it involves our kind of politics, particularly the stuff that's to do with the character of Ryan Gosling. Um, you know, I think that it, it's playful in, in its mood and how it does that. And I, I found it funny. I found myself laughing at it. And I, I mean, even though it is kind of woke in many ways, um, I thought that it sort of was taking the piss of maybe itself even. And um, so I didn't, think, I didn't, I didn't hate it. I thought that the, you know, the set design and, and all the colours and everything were quite well done. And it was sort of funny with the two worlds. And in the real world, you've got Will Farrow, who's kind of Will Farrow, who's kind of the um, leader of Mattel, blah blah blah. So you know, I mean, it's not a bad film. Um, uh, it, it's sort of fun, and it, it, it's, it's got a lot of woke stuff in it, but it's got some non-woke, and it sort of balances itself a bit, and it's such a strange mess that it almost goes to show that this whole nonsense of identity politics is something that we should all move beyond. I don't know whether that's the intention of the filmmakers or whether it's just because the film's a bit inept, but I think that's the result. Um, but, you know, I mean, um, it's not a bad film, and it is a kind of good introduction to the main film we're going to discuss tonight, which is Mr... Oppenheimer, stick around.